Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix uh, mainframe channel. Um, today we're going to be looking at yet another programming language. Uh, this is actually today not, as you can see from the screen here, we're not going to be talking about the typical mainframe uh, programming language such as PL1 or COBOL or S360 or S370 assembler, but we're talking about BASIC. Um, of course, uh, BASIC uh, also exists on the mainframe. There are several uh, different implementations of BASIC for the mainframe. Um, and uh, today we're going to be looking at one particular BASIC implementation, which I rather like um, for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, because it's written, this BASIC interpreter is actually written in PL1, my favorite programming language on the mainframe, but also for uh, because it's great it's also a great exercise on how to install software and how to get things to run on uh, on our beloved TK4. So uh, let's look at this uh, basic. This uh, basic that we're going to be looking at today is actually only surfaced recently. Um, it was written by a student in in uh, uh, in in 1964, and we're going to be seeing some comments throughout the code later on that show us how the author of this um, of this uh, basic came to uh, to really uh, get write this basic interpreter and release it to the Hercules community uh, over the past year. Um, so let's first of all look at uh, some comments about the origin of this basic. Um, we go to Mosley's website who has uh, more information about this. Um, and uh, let's look here a little bit what he says. So uh, this basic interpreter was written by one Mr. Ed Liss, who contributed, uh, who wrote this basic interpreter in PL1. Um, it, and as I mentioned also before, um, he wrote this interpreter when he was a student and he meant to keep working on it. And then recently, about 40, uh, 42 years later, after he first wrote the interpreter, he found a, uh, a manual of it and uh, and some code and scanned it in, uh, which is this manual here that we're looking at here right now, and you can clearly see it's a scanned scanned manual. Um, and and then actually uh, polished the code up a little bit and uh, made it available as a tape image. Um, and uh, and we're going to be uh, looking at how to get it to run on TK4. Um, so the way he released, at least released the software is that there is actually a PL1 source for the for the interpreter, which is great because I actually have some improvements I want to be uh, putting into this basic interpreter. And then um, an install, uh, he also has an install job on how to copy it into uh, our mainframe. And then he has some basic code that he wrote uh, to test out the the code itself, uh, the interpreter itself. So, um, what I did is also I uh, created a new um, a new repository on GitHub called uh, Basic 360, where I have the job itself, um, the restore job, um, and all the documentation required to get it to work. Um, the way that uh, we get this, we'll look at it in a second. Um, the way this is all installs is that there is a simple job to uh, copy from tape everything into our mainframe and then it creates a partition data set and inside the partition data set is all we need to compile the interpreter and then test it. Uh, I'll be putting below this video um, a description on how to get um, to um, to uh, the github uh, copied on your on your system but let's see how we would do it um, in a real case scenario here so um, again, the link is going to be below this video that you're watching, but let's get started. So what I did is, first of all, I just um, downloaded and installed a fresh copy of MBS 3.8, update 8, as you can see from, from this comment here. Uh, as always, before we go and start um, our mainframe, I will go into the unattended directory and do a set full mode so that we actually get to interact with the console of MVS up on level and then now we can start it and I connect a, um, a terminal to port 3270 and let's wait for MVS to come up here it's already 
IPLing. Uh, let's see what's already up and running. So yeah, Jess 2 is already started. And then the uh, automator for the console, BSP pilot and command one subsystem are also already up and running. So let's wait here for things to come up. So that's it, peak time is up. Um, very good. So and here we can just log in. I'll log in as herc01, the usual tk4 password, nothing. This is just fresh out of the zip file. Um, and go here, herc01, if you're following what I'm typing here, um, and see what comes back. That's a, just a brand new, fresh installation. Now, um, once you've actually, uh, let's open up a new Unix window here, a Linux window, and I'll make the font a little bigger here. Uh, custom font, let me, let me make it 15. Okay, so that should be easier for everybody to read, and I hope the quality of the video this time is also acceptable to everybody. Um, so I have this repository. Which is the one you just saw on GitHub. It's exactly, that's actually where I created the GitHub repository out of. And we have a, we have a job here this is easier to read for everybody okay let's make this just the only window so that should be very easy to read uh, we have a herc01 restore job with message class h so we can retrieve it from our terminal window in the jest2 uh, spool and of course we have to put in the user and password because we're going to be submitting this from the card reader uh, on the console and then we have um, uh, a step which you saw in the previous video. Every time um, you want to do work on the DAS, these on the disk, ID cams, the the VSAM administration utility is always a good uh, utility to use because you have this extensive uh, VSAM language, and you can also actually use it for stuff that is not VSAM related. So such as this command here, delete. In case we have a directory, uh, a PDS called herc01 basic 360 load lib, deleted, purge, and non-vsam, that gives it away, and then also um, the source code for the interpreter, deleted, so that we don't install over old stuff, and then we have an ifbr14, this is a utility everybody in the mainframe world should know, anytime you want to allocate data sets, um, you can run a program called IEF branch 14. All it does is it, uh, it it enters the program and the branches back to register 14, which means it exits uh, it exits the program immediately again within uh, within four instructions, and uh, so it's extremely fast in going in and out. But then you can it's just a placeholder, like almost like a dummy program, so that you can use the step to allocate some uh, data sets, which is what we're doing here, allocating herc one on pub 000. Um, and we give it 15 tracks and then also basic 360 which we also um, uh, make um, 30 tracks in this case let me make this a little bigger because I want to put some source code in there um, and um, and that's it and then it will copy with using IB copy as we saw in one of my videos on how to get data in and out of the mainframe you can use ibcopy to copy the uh, contents of this data set from the tape, which in this case is unit 480, defer, so we can actually uh, mount it uh, with some commands from the console, and then it copies from uh, from the tape onto this PDS as we just um, allocated uh, in the previous step. So that's all this job does, and, um, and uh, that's the only thing we need to run outside the mainframe to get BASIC to work. So I hope so far everybody followed. Um, where is my window? Uh, 
with my mainframe. Okay, here it is. So the mainframe is fully up and running. Um, I don't need MF1, the report generator for for the uh, environmental recorder. So we can uh, take this out. Um, and um, let's go and try to run this job. What I did is I copied this job, the restore job, as well as the tape image itself, which is this BAS 220 version 2.20, uh, into my uh, home directory. Well, actually, we can just leave it here. So what we do is we uh, launch this job by doing um, device init 00c, which is the card reader. And then I have uh, basic. This will, so we just device in it. Oh, and actually the leading slash we don't need because this is not an MBS command, this is a Hercules command. So device in it 00C and then the path to uh, wherever you have it on your system to this restore job. So let's launch it. And of course, it's asking now for, for us to mount the tape on uh, tape device 480. How do we reply to this slash? Uh, first, first of all, let's do device in it for 80, and then again the same path, and then basic, basic, basic again. In my case, sorry for the repeat here, and the name of the tape. So we mount the, we do a device in it on device 480 with this tape image, and MVS. Uh, got the interrupt that the tape was loaded and so therefore continued the job which was waiting for the tape to be loaded recognized the, uh, the tape label uh, the volume label and continue processing so this is all there is to it we can already close this window because we're not going to be doing much more in this window um, let's go to our terminal make it a little bigger so it's easier for everybody to read Okay, so 3.8, yeah, we should find the job called Herg01R, and there it is. So we saw, we see there is a return code zero everywhere uh, for all three steps. The uh, first, the removal of the data sets in case they existed, then the allocating of the data sets, and then the copying from tape. You will see the tape. Um, message from the console which is reporting the just 2 job log and then the copying itself went fine um, this took obviously over a minute just because we had to give we have to type the answer uh, in Hercules to mount the tape so that's why the job took over a minute otherwise it would be just mere seconds um, everything went fine so if that is true then we can now we should now see two data sets called Herc01 basic one with the load library and one with the PL1 source code. Yep, and here it is. So we have this data set, which has um, the load library. This is the pre-compiled version of basic, but we also have the source code version. And the source code is here. Okay, very interesting. So let's see what at lists the author says he was at the South Hammond Institute of Technology in the fall of 1974. And what it does, implement a basic compiler slash interpreter for the IBM 360 using the original Dartmouth specifications for basic. So this is the original basic as it was released by Dartmouth University in the early 60s. The primary intent is to create a basic compiler interpreter for beginning students to learn the basic language instead of GoTran on the soon to be retired 1620. So he w the author wanted to offer a compiler that's easier than GoTran, which I guess was a mixture of Fortran and some other language. Uh, the target environment is a 32 kilobyte. So the computer that, they, that Ed wanted to, or was running this basic interpreter on, was of, um, a 32 kilobyte IBM 360 Model 30, one of the smallest mainframes ever offered by IBM in the 360 family with DOS 360. Uh, obviously this wasn't running OS 360 because it was with 32 kilobytes it was way way too small to run OS 360 but it had the PL1 decompiler 
and it's called the decompiler for PL1 because it had to fit within 16 kilobytes. So they had a whole compiler that could fit inside uh, a machine running an operating system and uh, an assembler, um, and uh, and then the end result, the PL1 compiler being able to run everything in within 16 kilobytes um, of RAM, um, which is quite amazing. Um, so this program, this package, is being designed to have modular source code since it is envisioned that this product will be implemented in several different environments. Simple batch, which is how we're going to be running it today, and then monitor batch, and online. Uh, in fact, there is already a basic which we can run online. It's offered by the same folks who write, uh, have a, um, a version of the uh, assembler for the mainframe. Uh, which op actually runs on Windows and Linux. Um, I have to go find the name of those folks. But um, let's see what else he wrote. Um, this project was started as a class project a while back, in fact, 42 years early. In typical, in typical IT style, it was shelved until we had time to work on it again. It's been 42 years since then. I found it in my archives and scanned it with a little work, basic 360 lives uh, again, uh, and we're going to be proving that. And then there's a change log. Um, now, you can see here, that's something I actually wanted to touch on. Uh, he has a wish list of features, and I understand that Ed was implementing the, um, the Dartmouth uh, version, early version of BASIC, but one thing that I wish would be implemented, and um, and in fact I may do it myself if I'm time if I'm time on maybe one of the flights, is the ability to use the print statement or like any execute any statement after the if then clause. So if you have if this if variable a is bigger than three, then uh, do something like print this on the uh, you know or or do that um, do something. Right now, the the version we have, this basic, the only thing you can do after the if then is a go to statement to some line where you actually do what you wanted to do. And this creates unnecessary spaghetti code, uh, which I don't like. But other than that, this is the PL1 source code for the interpreter, uh, easy to read. And in fact, if you were interested in seeing how to write an interpreter or a compiler for any language, uh, this is a very good introduction to the topic. So, um, let's first compile our, our basic interpreter. And we have here a job predefined to do that. One thing that I would ask you to change is go from class S to class A. Uh, we don't need all this. Um, yeah, we make the class A, and then I put it into message class H, so I can see, I can see it um, on my monitor here on my 3270 emulator in the Jazz 2 cube. Everything else should be fine. So let's execute this. If you want to see uh, the console while we do that, we can do this as well. So you should be able to see the MIPS go up as I submit this job. There we go. Yeah, 56 MIPS, 64 MIPS, 20 MIPS, done. Um, let's go see this pool. And it uh, compiled fine without errors, um, which it should because the DOS uh, PL1D compiler and the OS360 PL1F compiler had a design specification that they should be compatible, and they were. Then we have a minor warning message in the linkage editor. Um, and actually, this is the compile. Uh, it has a minor warning, and then the linkage editor went fine without problem. So um, this should have executed just fine. Actually, this is obviously a bigger program, so we're not going to go through all scroll through all of it, but. This looks good. So, um, so now that we've got this done, let's run some samples. Um, to run some samples, we change it again to message class age. 
Um, looks like everything else is fine. Let's run it. And we should see interesting output now. Job 3 submitted and it's already finished. Okay, here it is, job 3. Return code 0. So it ran the emulator and supplied some source to it, some basic source code. And so uh, here is one example. The first example is demo program for ba basic 360, demos for next print and functions. For i 1 to 10, so we kind of from 2 to 10, and then print i, which should print the count, and then the count times itself, and then the square root of the count, and the absolute value of the count. So this is exactly the output we have here. It should go to 10. Yep. And that's what we get. And then there's some more. Um, source code. Uh, we even have a sinus wave plotter. Uh, that's interesting. And so yeah, that's the that's a basic program that was just executed. Mm. So what we can do now is actually we can write our own little program, and then I can explain to you why the lack of a, of a statement after the if then is a problem. So let's do verb zero one. Basic 360. Okay. Basic 360. YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Print. now do a for loop 121 for i equals 1 to 10 122 if i equal smaller than 10 which should be the case every time because it stops at 10 um, then I. Okay, as long as it's less than 10, it should just print out the value of the counter. Now, this is actually illegal uh, in Dartmouth basic, basic view. The only thing you can have here after the then is not the, actually a directive or a statement. You have to put, put in uh, go to 140. Um, and that's spaghetti code, you'll see in a second. So now that we have this down here, after this next here, I actually have to go, oops, if you follow, That's very typical spaghetti code. So we count from 1 to 10. If it's less than 10, then we print it. But for that, I need a go to print i and then go back to 129 for the next iteration of the loop. Once everything is done, we say print and goodbye. 
go to 999 so we actually really can go to the end of the program. So this is very annoying and that's all because I don't have a then print uh, here. Obviously I could just say um, if i is not bigger than 10 um, but that would be another way to do it. Um, okay, so we have YouTube here. Okay. Let's see what comes out of this. Okay. Invalid number. Oh, okay. So we have to just put in the light, uh, the line uh, number. So okay. Let's see what came out of it. Return code zero. Okay, so now he printed the counter in the correct order. Um, of course, we could just put it in within the loop here, uh, within the for loop print, but I wanted to show is that if I have an if statement within the loop, then I actually have to use a go to, uh, and, and then they have to program around the go to statement. So it's, you could probably uh, do it in a more elegant way, but the lack of a print is a real problem. That's all I wanted to show. Uh, and goodbye. So it executed properly. 143 instructions executed. Um, so um, that's it. So this is how we use BASIC 360 on this mainframe, how we install it, and everything about BASIC obviously should be known already to the public. It's an extremely well known language. Um, actually, back in the 70s, 60s, and 70s, there were whole companies that thought the BASIC should be the programming language of choice for to write the application for those companies. And not few applications, uh, if not, you know, uh, many uh, corporations actually did use BASIC because it seemed extremely easy to learn. Uh, so this is all about uh, BASIC 360, this version of uh, this implementation of BASIC. If you have any questions, uh, please ask me in the comments below this video. Um, please do subscribe so you can get notifications of future videos and if you like this particular video press on the thumbs up uh, button. Thank you very much and goodbye.